We visited Chillington Castle on our way to a cycle tour in Northumbria, and what follows is a mix of photos and videos of the grounds and parts of the castle. Several kilometers east of the village of Wooler in Northumbria is the village of Chatton, and a few kilometers south of that is the Chillingham Estate. It's famous for its castle as well as its herd of white cattle. During our visit, we actually didn't see any of the cattle, so can't really talk about those particularly wild beasties. Chillingham Castle has a long history according to the 30-page guide written by Sir Humphrey Wakefield. It all seems to have started as a rough stone tower built over a cave which was later taken over by the Romans. White cattle, for some reason, are associated with the site, were occasionally sacrificed for the Romans, and after the Romans departed, the local pagan, pagan tribes took over the castle. Sometime later, Christianity arrived. There was no need to sacrifice the cattle, but they do seem to have been a rather fierce set of beasties that took care of themselves and scared away a lot of people that might have wanted to wander around at the castle grounds. Let's start our walking tour not by going down the formal drive, but by way of the woodland path. This takes us through some beautiful old trees. Unfortunately, there was evidence all over about that many of them had not survived a storm late last year. It does give you time to transition to the pace of the castle that you're about to explore. As we emerge from the woods, we can look back along the formal drive and then along toward the castle. Behind the wall is the castle formal garden. You find this quite intriguing to look from the rooftop of the castle down on the garden so that you can plan your exploration. The walls of the castle vary in quality from rough to quite finely detailed. And the finest detail is at the entrance, which leads you to the main courtyard. To the left of the courtyard is the minstrel gallery. There's a grand staircase leading up to the main hall, which has been used now as an armory. Below the armory is a series of like a Bronze Age room and a torture chamber. Great fun for the kids.
The Minstrel Gallery is about the 16th room that you go through during the tour. It's the cafe. It has a massive fireplace. Here's a photo of it. This castle is not run by the usual suspects. It has its own ideas about how to present history and the clutter and detritus of a very long period of occupation. And let's start with the fun of the boot room. If you own a castle, you're expected to entertain royalty. And if your castle isn't quite up to scratch, you've got to build some more rooms and make them suitably grand. This is the St. James room, and it's one of three that was put together for one such royal visit. In the corner of the courtyard is a square stair. It ties everything together, all the major rooms, and it has a particular delightful collection of artifacts as you climb the stairs. You get views out into the courtyard, views into the rooms that you're passing, and eventually you reach the roof of the building. The stair seems to lead to spaces that are closed off, but there's quite a bit of holiday accommodation held within the castle. Here's one of those views out into the courtyard. And a bit further along, we have the choice of going out onto the roof. And here's the garden. According to the guide, it was designed in 1828 in preparation for the visit of the King of France. And from the rooftop, we can go back into the Edward I room. Guess what? Yet another royal visitor. Yet another need for redecoration and actually putting a grand new window in a rather old part of the castle. One of the most delightful rooms is the museum. It comes after several of the more formal renovations. Well worth spending some time in here. I particularly like the aeroplane models that relate to something his uncle did. The gardens include any number of quirky features. See if you can find the lions. <laughs> 